In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a drag and drop question using H5P Interactive Video. So we're going to start on our Moodle page. I'm going to scroll down to the video that I'll be adding the drag and drop question to. I'm going to edit my settings. So I've already created some fill in the blank questions in some previous videos. And now I'm going to add some additional interactions to this video, which will be the drag and drop questions. So the question that I want to add the drag and drop to is here at 21 seconds. So I'm just going to pause the video right there. Now I'm going to add my drag and drop interactive. So I'm going to click on drag and drop. I'm going to pause the video for about two seconds. And when I display as a poster, it's going to fill up the entire size of the screen. We're going to call it drag the blue squares to create the fractions below. So the next thing we need to do is add an image. Now what I've already done is in PowerPoint, I've created two rectangles here, one with four squares and one with five squares. So the question is going to ask students to create uh, a fraction that shows three out of four and one over five. What I need to do now is add this image that I've created in PowerPoint into my H5P interactive video. And the way I do that is by adding it as a background image. And what I'm going to do is just file, I'm going to save it as an image. So the way you can do that here is when you click file, save as in PowerPoint, you click JPEG file, I'm going to click save. And here it's going to ask which slides do you want to export? Because it's just the one, I'm going to click just this one. So now I've saved this slide from PowerPoint as an image file on my desktop, which I need now to add as a background image. So I'm going to click add. And here I am on my desktop. I'm going to click slide 49. That's the image that I just created. And you'll see it's now showing up here. Okay, so now that I've added my background image, I'm going to go ahead and create my task. So now that I have my background image, I need to add that little blue square that I want the students to drag into each of these individual squares to make the fractions. So luckily for me, I've already added that image to my computer. And here I have it as a blue square image. We have to give it an alternative text. I'm going to call it a blue square. And then I click done. So there's my blue square. Now you'll see I can drag it around. I can resize it. And what I want to do is make it about the same size as these blue squares here that you see on the screen. I'm just going to zoom in my screen a few times. I'm just going to play around a little bit with some resizing. And that looks to be about a good size that students can use to drag to fill in these squares to make the fractions. So now that I know it's the right size, I'm going to drag it down here, right to about here. So now what I want to do is I want to add some text instructions for the students. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to say, drag this blue square multiple times to fill in the rectangles above. I'm just going to click done. Now as you can see I can resize my text here as well. So what I'm going to do now is create what are called drop zones. Because we're creating a drag and drop question we need to program this to show where this square is going to go. So now um, this other option up here you'll see insert drop zone and I'm going to call it 1 over 4 and you'll see in just a moment why I'm doing that. So click done. Now this square here I'm going to resize because this represents 1 over 4 in my first rectangle. And I can use my arrow keys on my keyboard to move it into place. So there's my first drop zone. I'm going to press Control C on my keyboard. Control V. There's a copy of it. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep moving them into place using the arrow keys on my keyboard. Now you're probably wondering, um, the answer is going to be 3 out of 4. Why did I put 4 squares? Well, this is because we want to give the student 
all of the options so that they have to choose how many squares to put into the rectangle to make the correct fraction of 3 out of 4. So for example, if they drag three blue rectangles in here, then that's the correct answer. But if they do add the fourth rectangle in here, it'll mark their question as incorrect. So now I'm still copying and pasting, and I'm going to do the same thing for this other rectangle here on the other side. And there we go, we have all of the drop zones now created and set up for this question. So now, because I've been copying and pasting from the first one, which I had named 1 over 4, what I want to do now is double click on each of these and rename them, because we don't want them to all have the same label. And you'll see why once we're ready to program our blue square. So what I'm doing is for this fraction I'm just labeling them as 1 over 4 all the way to 4 out of 4. And for this one I'm going to call this one 1 over 5 and do the same thing for each of these. Now what I'm going to do is actually change this instruction down here. Now I just want to add another note here. Fill in the rectangles from from left to right. Okay, so now that I've finished adding that tip, I'm just gonna scroll down here, click done, and I just have to resize this box a little bit. And you know what, I decided I'm gonna move this over and create the question like this, just so it's a little easier to see. Okay, so the next step in our drag and drop question is programming where this blue square can go to make it the correct answer. Now, because we want students to have to guess where it goes, we need to program the blue square to go in every single one of these blocks. So that is step one. Step two is we will then go into each of the blocks that are the correct answer and mark that as correct. So I'm going to double click on my blue square and I'm going to select all of the drop zones as potential places where that blue square could go and now I'm going to select done. Now you'll see a border has been added to the blue square which identifies it as a droppable element. Now I prefer not to have that border around the blue square so what I'm going to do is double click on it and change my opacity to zero and click done. So now you see the border has been removed and it's just a nice clean blue square again. So now that I've told my blue square that you can go in every single one of these drop zones the last thing we need to do is edit the drop zone again and check off the correct answers. So we know that in our fraction 3 over 4, we know that the correct answer will be a blue square in square 1, 2, and 3 only. As well, for fraction 1 over 5, if we have a blue square in the first square here, that is the correct answer to make the fraction 1 over 5. So now I'm going to program the correct drop zones. So number one, then double click on that drop zone and the correct element is a blue square in that drop zone. I'm going to click done. Same thing for number two, double click. The correct element is a blue square, click done. And number three, correct element is a blue square. I'm not going to do it for the fourth one, like I said, because we only want the first three to have the blue squares in them to make the fraction three out of four. And similarly over here, I'm only going to program the first drop zone. So I'm going to double click on that one. Blue square is the correct answer and done. So now that we've programmed both the droppable element, which is our blue square, we've checked off the appropriate drop zones. So we give students a choice of every single drop zone to choose from. As well, we've edited the correct drop zone. So although students can choose from every single one, there are only a few that are the correct answers. So now that I'm ready to test my question, I'm going to click done. Here's the question here. Now I want to save and display. And in the timeline here at the bottom, if I just hover over here, I'll see my drag and drop question has been added right about here. So if I click on that, it's going to skip ahead to that question in the video. And as you can see, the instructions are here at the top. So now I can click the blue square and I can move it to any location here in any of the drop zones. So although it's giving me all of the choices, there are only certain squares that make it the correct choice. So what I'm going to do is drag and drop the blue square 
into the first three squares here. So that makes my fraction 3 out of 4. As well, I'm going to do it over here for 1 over 5. So now that I've put the correct elements in the correct spots, I'm just going to use my little scroll bar here. I'm going to check my answers. And now as you can see, I got four check marks indicating that all four blue squares are in all four correct places. So now that we know we have the correct answer, that means that our drag and drop question is ready to go and we've programmed it correctly. So when you click save and display, you'll know that you've already saved your question and now you can return to your Moodle course. And when you're ready, you can click on that video. You'll see that it's now been added here in the timeline. And that is how you create a drag and drop question using draggable elements. Although it is a little bit tricky and takes a little bit of time, once you get the hang of it, you can build many more questions just like that. And the great thing about H5P interactive video is if you have two or more questions that are very similar in nature, you can copy and paste them from your timeline. So you don't have to reprogram all of that information over again.